folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a movie review in October since Halloween month. This time, it's a horror slasher comedy in the tradition of all the body switching movies that came out on November 13, 2020, last year, which caught me by surprise because it's from writer and director Christopher Landon, who happens to be the son of Michael Landon. Yes, the same man who who played Little Joe in the Western drama Bonanza. You know, do 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 of course. And he went on to do Little House on the Prairie and then Highway to Heaven until his death in ninety one. Uh but his son on the other hand is a writer of most of the Paranormal Activity films that he's done. Um, and I know he went on to do films like Scott's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, yeah, which I think that was his first horror comedy that he did, which I guess is in the tradition of Zombieland and Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, it was unfunny. I mean, it has its moments, but it just wasn't that good. And then he went on to do uh, Happy Death Day, which had a sequel that followed, yeah, which was in the tradition of Groundhog's Day, you know, with Time Warp focusing on this uh, you know, college uh, student girl who's pretty much a mean girl, kind of dumb, unlikable, but then she got uh, caught by this uh, serial killer uh, with a chubby face mask going after her, and now she's stuck in a Time Warp, yeah, okay, yeah perfectly described here. It's in the tradition of Freaky Friday. It's called simply Freaky. With Vince Vaughn, as you may know from several comedies and dramas that he's done, you know, such as uh, Wedding Crashers, um, uh, Fred Claus, Four Christmases, uh, he was also in films like Clay Pigeons, uh, Return to Paradise. Uh, he was even in the movie uh, The Lost World Jurassic Park. But of course, he was also in the Psycho remake by Gus Van Sant. Uh, by Gus Van Sant. But don't worry, this is a much better performance than he was when he played Norman Bates. <laughs> And uh, Catherine Newton, uh, which you may remember her from Paranormal Activity 4, yeah, she played the annoying blonde girl. And I know Christopher Lannon wrote this, so there you go. So that explains why he got her in this part. But she was also in Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yeah, she was the uh, reporter. Uh, very highly intelligent. Uh, she had a Pokemon too and all. So it's, it's nice to see uh, both of them together in this one particular horror slasher comedy where they switch bodies. Um, she played a teenage girl getting switched by a male middle-aged uh, serial killer known as the Blissfield uh, Butcher. Yeah, mass killer, but he can do a lot of slashing. So suddenly he took out this... Uh, very powerful uh, Ladola dagger ready to stab her um, during midnight and that's where they switch bodies on Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. This caught me by surprise when I saw this movie uh, last year. You know, I had a lot of fun. I was expecting something, you know, like it was going to be another bad movie or something like that or maybe this might be a, a big surprise and well, I was amazed. <laughs> so this is the Killer Switch edition that I picked up on Blu-ray. Uh, it does come with a DVD and a digital code. I did use it now and and uh, has all the features to join. Um, so yes, I did use the digital code already. And this comes with a uh, universal access. Oh, I know it's kind of hard to cover the the code and it has um, both uh, 
the Blu-ray and DVD. Yeah, the the DVD is in black. <laughs> the Blu-ray is just clear and, and red. Um, so yeah. So yeah, the features have uh, deleted scenes uh, plus uh, split personalities with Millie versus the Butcher, Christopher Landon's uh, brand of horror with feature commentary and more. So all included. So perfect. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's begin with the review. Um, it stars Vince Vaughn uh, with Catherine Newton, uh, Katie uh, Finderen, Celeste O'Connor, Misha Oshravovich, um, I, I hope I said it right, <laughs> Alan Ruck, yes, you may remember Alan Ruck, Cameron from Fairless Wheeler's Day Off, <laughs> and he was also in Speed, too. <laughs> well, what a great choice to have him in the movie. Um... Irala Shelton, uh, Melissa Calazzo, and Danny uh, Joy. Yeah, it's written by Michael Kennedy and Christopher Landon, who is also the director of the movie. With producer J Jason Blum from Blumhouse Productions. He's done several of the Blumhouse uh, movies here and there. The movie began set in a beautiful town called Blissfield during Wednesday night the 11th. It's obviously it might be October or so. <laughs> we meet four teenagers uh, from Blitzfield Valley High School where they're just having a party at uh, the young boy's mansion. It's obviously because his father is an archaeologist. He collects all these artificial uh, stuff around like masks and you know a lot of uh, rempuries and all that stuff. Even those uh, daggers and everything. Well, they were discussing urban legends involving a male middle-aged serial killer known as the Blissfield Butcher, who was played by Vince Vaughn, of course, which he goes around during the night slashing, dicing, and murdering all teenagers, which apparently he just broke and entered the mansion while this young boy was ready to go down to the basement in the cellar just to find a wine bottle so they can continue to go on having the party of their lives. But unfortunately, he heard some fumping noises. Father was his girlfriend, but she was in the bathroom. But then he accidentally dropped the bottle because of that and started to pick it up until the butcher arrives and you know already he stole the mask and and fully disguised and decided to take the another wine bottle and jam it directly into his throat. All the shards was coming directly from his neck and was killed. And then he goes around uh, killing this other boy by taking the tennis racket and then slashes uh, the, the young girl too. The final girl um, found a secret hiding place to get away from the butcher only discovered that her parents are about to arrive just in time, hoping she'll be lucky, but she didn't came out so lucky when the butcher came and and just threw uh, an arrow directly into her and she was murdered gruesomely. And also stole the ancient dagger known as the Ladala. So when the parents arrived, they were all shocked and appalled, they were screaming, so they were ready to call the police and the paramedics and all. The next day, which was um, Thursday the 12th, we meet a young girl, a young teenage girl named Millie Kessler. You know, she's a blonde, played by Catherine Newton, who is an outcast. Um, she's often getting bullied at high school, at Blissfield Valley High School, of course. Um, she lives with her mother, who is a widower and an alcoholic, named Cora, played by Kate Fennerin. Uh, joining in with her older sister, who was a police officer, Char, played by Danny, uh, Dana Dewari. She also has her best friends on her side. Uh, one is a black girl named Nyla, played by Celeste O'Connor, and her gay friend, Josh DeMel, played by 
Miss Show, um, Oscar Bobovic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, apparently, um, Millie, Millie just spins around uh, getting teased and tormented by her bully named Ryler, played by Melissa Colazzo, you know, already sending uh, rumors, uh, catfishing and all to her. And all her rest of her teenage friends goes around teasing and tormenting her. And not only that, but because there was a homecoming football game, she was dressed up as the school mascot, the Beavers. Yeah, where they end up throwing orange soda and all this other stuff at her. No kidding. So, as soon as the game was over, Millie was waiting for a ride, hoping that her mother will pick her up. Turns out it was her sister, because um, once again, uh, Cora had a drinking problem. She was drinking Swan Son uh, vodka. So now Char was was trying to pick her up as soon as she can, because she was trying to call her right away, but the phone died, and now the butcher had arrived and was ready to attack Millie with the uh, Ladola dagger, which by the time the the killer was revealed and ends up stabbing her in the shoulder with the dagger suddenly a powerful change had occurred when they somehow switched bodies yes so now um, Ashar had finally arrived scaring off the butcher and saves uh, Millie by taking her directly to the hospital so they can cover her wounds and the police had collected the Ladala as evidence and hoping they'll, they'll be on the search to find the butcher which now led to the following morning Friday the 13th bad luck day <laughs> where now both the butcher and Millie have really switched bodies for sure um, Millie just woke up very awkwardly you know she was ready to take out the, the butcher knife well um, Cora was just making some nice breakfast for her. They want her to stay home because she's not feeling very well. I mean, she does make the the most delicious uh, pancakes, now. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're thinking that she's going to probably stab uh, both of them, but not even close. <laughs> well, the butcher actually woke up awkwardly as well, you know, as Millie. Uh, ends up in this crook at home. Uh, he just checked the mirror and then he begins to have the personality of a girl and then he meets this uh, this drug addict, obviously a homeless person, just saying that this might have been a drug, but it's not. And and, <laughs> and he just wants to take that same drug so he'll become a girl too. <laughs> that was hilarious. So, of course, both um, Millie, who's just dressed up using a red letter jacket, try to give it a new style look of her personality, and the butcher was just ready to run away from the rest of the town because now they're going completely crazy and nuts that this is the guy. <laughs> so he was trying to get away from them all, hoping that he won't bump into the cops and everything. They went straight to Blissfield Valley High School. Um, the butcher just went inside the girls' locker room just to take a shower, although he actually went to the boys' room too, um, go to the restroom and all. all only to discover he's being chased down by Millie's friends, uh, Nyla and Josh, which they're about to attack him. And he was trying to warn them that he's actually Millie, you know, giving him, uh, giving them the uh, the school spirit, <laughs> so they recognize. Um, because he was trying to explain what just happened, and while Millie. Uh, just found uh, Ryler, and then Ryler eventually was already going to be attacked by the butcher. So, of course, jams her directly into the girls' locker room at, at the uh, chiral yeah, therapy tank and put it up the notch to 300 uh, Fahrenheit. <laughs> and that's where she became frozen solid and she dies. You know, shattered into pieces when the butcher found out after he took a shower. <laughs> Okay, which led to even much of, which led to another killing spree was when Millie 
went inside the the wood the the shop class where you know where he she does all of, of her projects you know carving wood of any kind she was supposed to do an assignment to carve a a doghouse so we meet this uh, unsympathetic and very abusive and and a big asshole too of a woodshop teacher named Mr. Bernardi played by Alan Ruck you know he's always been you know always tormenting her as well um, <laughs> apparently uh, Millie was about to uh, fight against him but then he uses self-defense you know beat her up completely and then suddenly uh, Millie wants up um, stabbing uh, Mr. Bernardi in the neck with a uh, screwdriver and then after yeah all that blood started to squirt out and then after that puts him into the table saw and saw him in half completely so now he's dead finally the cops had arrived and Millie somehow came and suddenly points the finger at uh, the butchers you know with uh, Nyla and Josh and that's what led to a chase scene all the way around you know with Josh's car and they're driving all the way to this discount store where they're trying to find uh, a costume mask uh, for the butcher so they can hide his identity. But somehow the, the butcher wants up inside the, the fitting room where, yeah, it was a girl's fitting room where it got bumped into um, Cora because she also works there. Yeah, because she works there as well. So now she was making a a very nice conversation talking about uh, her problems you know she lost her father and apparently she's growing up she's gonna end up hitting college soon and hoping maybe they'll make it up for her after you know her alcoholism uh, alcoholism that she's going through so of course Butcher decided to give her an advice and all that and maybe they might be able to meet together which that's never going to happen and soon they both Nyla and Joss have found the mask and they're ready to escape then they discover that um, that Millie is at the mini golf course where that's where she's about to meet um, her boyfriend love interest named Booker Strode played by Urara Shelton um, yeah, who hangs around with all the jockey friends um, for the football game. And this is where we begin to find out that Millie was ready to kill him. So they had to stop him right they had to stop her right away by going inside this entire room that's filled with all this uh, Halloween decorations. <laughs> and then when they finally um, found Millie, because they they found her directly through the uh, surveillance uh, camera footages. They got her. Um, they basically knock uh, Booker unconscious and all. <laughs> and now they're about to uh, leave right away. And they tied her up. Also, we begin to learn that even later in, in that afternoon, the school's uh, official homecoming had been canceled. So because of that, um, the, they decided to suggest uh, a new dance that's going to happen and there's going to be a party coming around um, okay so at this rate um, they decided to form a plan to actually try to get the Ladala dagger uh, directly through the police office so they had to go right away with joining in with the butcher Nyla while Josh had to stay at his house uh, watching Millie you know, hoping that she won't uh, escape but then his mother came around and this is where he was trying to to trick her into thinking that they're playing a game but of course it just gets worse after that uh, they were almost ready to get stabbed by Millie <laughs> so they're trying to hurry up too um, they Millie escapes her right um, and uh, Josh was about to chase around her and hoping that um, she'll, he'll be able to get to the police to arrive on time. But Char eventually came uh, while the butcher and Nyla was, was ready to get the dagger, but unfortunately she got caught by Char. And, and then the butcher came and was ready 
as Char was ready to take the butcher directly into the the jail cell, apparently uh, the butcher decided to swing around into the jail, so she's in there, and they're ready to escape. So that way they have like a couple uh, hours, perhaps almost until midnight, where if if midnight had passes within 24 hours, though, they're gonna stay in their bodies forever. You know, so this is in again, just like uh, Freaky Friday. So they gotta hurry up as soon as they can, while Millie's just going around in the party before all these jocks are are raping her. They're attempting to until she wants up uh, slashing them completely. You know, stabbing them in the eye and slashing their throats and, and all, you know, breaking them apart. And then they arrived, um, the butcher finally got the Ladala to, and was ready to say, I want my body back. And then Millie says, come and get it. And that's where they go around attacking each other before him. it's finally time. He also has the watch, you know, hoping this he'll still make it on time to finally make the switch by stabbing her once again in the same shoulder so now they can finally make the switch which they did so that's finally completed I mean they almost went in there too late but they realized it was just five minutes ahead <laughs> so it really worked sort of a trick I know but what it, what can you do <laughs> so now uh, they finally killed the butcher well they shot him uh, by the cops so now they were taking uh, Millie um, directly straight home. I mean, just after she gets fully recovered, um, you know, with Char and and uh, Kara together. And apparently, already uh, the paramedics was you know taking the, the butcher straight to the hospital, but already he's dying as we fought. Well, that's where we led to the twist and a very awesome twist. You know, thank goodness, you know, the writer and director, Christopher Landon, did something right for a change. But this twist uh, was so awesome, I just loved this. It turns out the bitch, the butcher was not dead at all. Um, they thought he was, but actually because the, the part didn't connect to it, so he really was alive. He probably killed the, the paramedics team. And now he finally arrives at the door hoping things will become a miracle but it wasn't because the last part we learned that yes the butcher was alive and he was ready to stab Millie by stealing the the kitchen butcher knife and it leads to the fight at the end you know where Shar was ready to pull out the trigger but the butcher took out all the bullets from her gun so that's what became a big fight and Millie eventually started to go for a much different change because now she realized that after she was inside his body, he gets to kick his ass. And thank God, he kicks him in, in the nuts. Yeah, he even says the line, you know what I learned about when I was in your side of your body? Your balls suck. <laughs> and then after that, he just uh, already pushing them aside and then she ends up kicking him beating the shit out of him and and went directly into what she exit threw him directly into the to the broken table and the leg eventually uh, books breaks off and then she took the the leg out of the table and stabs him directly into his in the back that goes directly into his chest where the heart is and he finally dies and his sister charge just says Damn, Millie! <laughs> oh, and the movie finally ends, and I love it. Um, truly an awesome horror slasher comedy that's so well done, well made. Um, not a single bad scene that I can think of. It just works on so many levels. And Vince Vaughn and Catherine Newton did an excellent job. This is definitely Bond's better performance. Uh, this is exactly a much better performance than his Norman Bates character in Psycho. He can play psychopaths, yes, but he can play him in a much better way. That's how you do it. 
And Catherine Newton, see, at least it's great to see her so refreshing not to become an annoying girl. She can play her exactly straight forward. She can be very strong, very charismatic. She has a great personality and all. I love her in this one. I mean, it really shows. So, Landon did a great job uh, casting her after casting her in Paranormal Activity 4, which was annoying. <laughs> yeah, but this is the, the one I really love the most here. As opposed to uh, her character in Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yeah. The rest of the cast were great, too, to join in. Um, and they, they really played their performances very well. And a lot of satirical humor in there. A lot of awkwardness around. There's a lot of funny moments here and there. Um, the slashing, the kills are so well put. I mean, yes, they use practical, but there's some CGI in there. Not too much, but it's so well done. Incredible how they did it. <laughs> A lot of blood and gore and, and all. Um, the writing is just very sharp. Um, the music, uh, the score, yeah, they, there's a blend of some other teenage pop music as we often hear. But there's also the score by Bear McCreary, the, the same uh, composer who did uh, uh, The Walking Dead along with um, Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., Battlestar Galactica, among others. Yeah, so he did a great job composing it so. and I I love the setting too and I love how it, it it goes into the tradition of all the body switching movies too I mean this is the first time they actually had used genders to to make the body switch because often with other body switching comedies and and dramas and all you know like Freaky Friday uh, like father like son vice versa and all it's usually you know the mothers and the daughters you know switching bodies to get in their place or fathers and sons you know switching bodies to get in their place and then of course no matter how old and how young they are it's just it fits so well and for this concept to work for a horror slasher comedy it works even better and I love that and it's also in the other traditions of other uh, movies to follow, like Scream, Cherry Falls, and many others. Um, I mean, Jason Blum, I know he's trying to go through a lot of edges to find any horror film that he produces. You know, some good, some bad, I mean, whatever. But this one really works, and I love it. And I'm... I'm just so amazed that when I saw this uh, last year, I was so surprised and having to see this again on Blu-ray and even watching it uh, the first time around uh, from my digital code, I mean, it just it just gets better and better. <laughs> so, yes. So check this movie out. You're going to have fun no matter what. So that's Freaky, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.